A flight plan is the means by which an ATSU is notified of your intentions to fly, and where necessary, to request clearance to fly as a controlled flight. A flight plan is to be submitted prior to operating any flight or portion thereof to be provided with an air traffic control service, or any IFR flight within advisory airspace, or any flight within or into designated areas or along designated routes, when so required by appropriate ATS authorities to facilitate the provision of flight information, alerting. And search and rescue services, or any flight within or into designated areas, or along designated routes, when so required by the appropriate ATS authority, to facilitate coordination with appropriate military units, or with air traffic service units in adjacent states, in order to avoid the possible need for interception for the purposes of identification. An example of this is to coordinate with the controllers of the air defence interception zones the USA has offshore of its east and west coastlines, or any flight across international borders, not just FIR boundaries. A flight plan should be submitted before departure to an ATS reporting office, flight planning section, ops room, ATC, or FIS office. Or during flight, transmitted to the appropriate ATS unit or air-to-ground control radio station, unless arrangements have been made for the submission of repetitive flight plans. Unless otherwise required by the ATS authority, a flight plan is to be submitted at least 60 minutes before departure, or if submitted in flight at a time that will ensure its receipt by the appropriate ATS U. At least ten minutes before the aircraft is estimated to reach the intended entry point to a control area or advisory area, or the point of crossing an airway or advisory route. A flight plan is to contain the following, as considered relevant by the appropriate ATS: aircraft identification, flight rules and type of flight, number and type of aircraft, and wake turbulence category. Equipment, departure aerodrome, and estimated off-blocks time (EOBT) for a flight plan submitted in the air. These items should be a place where the ATSU can obtain more information about the flight, and the time should be the first time an air traffic control or advisory service is required. Cruising speeds, cruising levels, route to be followed. Destination aerodrome and total elapsed time. Alternate aerodrome. Fuel endurance. Total number of persons on board. Emergency and survival equipment. Other information. With the exception of inadvertent deviations from planned flight. All changes to a flight plan submitted for IFR flight or a VFR flight operated as a controlled flight are to be reported as soon as practicable to the appropriate air traffic services unit. For other VFR flights, significant changes to flight plans should be reported as soon as practicable to the appropriate ATSU. Closing a flight plan arrival plan is to be done in person by radio or data link. As soon as possible after landing, to the appropriate ATSU at the arrival aerodrome, for any flight or portion of flight for which the flight plan has been submitted. On receipt of the arrival report, the ATSU will close the flight plan. When communication facilities are known to be inadequate, and alternative message handling facilities do not exist, a message comparable to an arrival report is required. Failure to comply with these provisions may cause serious disruption of air traffic services, and is likely to incur great expense in carrying out unnecessary SAR operations. An arrival report is to contain the following: aircraft identification, departure aerodrome, destination aerodrome, arrival aerodrome, time of arrival. Destination aerodrome is only included, of course. If it is not the arrival aerodrome, in other words, 
The aircraft has been diverted. Coordinated universal time is to be used and is to be expressed in hours and minutes using the 24-hour clock, beginning at midnight. Time checks by ATC are given accurate to the nearest minute. An ATC clearance is to be obtained prior to operating a controlled flight or a portion of a flight as a controlled flight. Such a clearance can be requested by the submission of a flight plan to an ATCU. A pilot in command may request an amended clearance if the one issued is unsatisfactory and as such an amended clearance will be issued if practicable. It would be normal practice for a clearance to be passed to the aircraft before departure and at busy aerodromes a discrete clearance delivery frequency is specifically established for the issue of ATC clearances. Before passing the pilot to clearance you will be asked ready to copy. When ready your response will be go ahead. The clearance will be read to you and when terminated you will be asked to read back. You are required to read back the clearance verbatim. If you make an error, you will be asked to repeat the process until you correctly read back the clearance. This ensures that you completely understand the issue clearance. Don't forget that air traffic controllers are fallible. So if you believe that there is an error in your clearance, then query it. Flight plans are to be adhered to unless an emergency situation occurs which necessitates immediate action by the aircraft. In such a case, the ATSU is to be informed as soon as possible. Controlled flights are required to operate along the center line of an airway or route directly between beacons, if that is how the route is specified. If a controlled flight inadvertently deviates from its current flight plan, the following action is to be taken. Deviation from track must result in actions to immediately regain track, Variation in TAS by more than plus minus 5% of TAS specified in the flight plan must result in the notification of the ATC. Changes in ETA that result in more than three minutes being added to arrival times at reporting points or FIR boundaries must be communicated to the ATC. Weather deterioration below VMC that prevents maintenance of a running flight plan clearance must result in the requesting of a new flight plan or the following of a new routing that allows accommodation of the new VFR flight conditions. Unless advised to cease position reporting by an ATCU, pilots of aeroplanes on controlled flights are to make position reports as soon as practicable after reaching that point. The report is to contain the aircraft identification the aircraft's position, the time, the flight level of passing the point, the aeroplane's next position and estimated time of arrival, any other information deemed necessary. If SSR mode C has been verified by the ATCU as accurate, then flight level reports may be omitted. A controlled flight is to advise the appropriate ATCU as soon as it ceases to be subject to air traffic control services. This will be done automatically as soon as an aircraft lands at a controlled aerodrome. 